Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. I'm not even going to try to explain what this is. You can see it for yourself. This is probably one of the more silliest tutorials I've ever done. And I hope you enjoy it. Stick around. We'll see how we put this together. Now, as you can see, we're doing this kind of a cool loop thing. And we're going to actually turn this into an animated GIF at the end of this tutorial. To do this, you're going to need some footage. So you can download this exact footage I used in this tutorial. There's a link in the description. And the person who volunteered himself to be a model in this video, his name is Aaron Alsop, and he's got a YouTube channel that I highly recommend you go and subscribe to. There's a link right in the description. It'll take you right to his channel, or you can click on this annotation. He's actually doing a lot of cool stuff. They've, they're putting together a documentary, and he's got lots of behind the scenes um, of putting together that documentary. And I actually might do some some motion work for the documentary. We'll see about that. So to get started, let's create a brand new composition. So just Command N will open up a new composition or Control N if you're on Windows. Just going to call this Aaron. And I'm going to bring in my video. And so let me kind of scrub to the part where I want. And, and there we go. He's starting to move down. You can see up, up in the right corner. And I want it to start when he's off the screen, so right there. And I'm going to just take this, I'm going to hit Option, and then the left bracket on the keyboard, which is right next to the P. I need to change my composition settings. It's only set at 20 frames. So let's set this at 10 seconds, just so we can see what's going on. And I need this to be right where he's out. Right there. So, and then... Option right bracket, which is next to the left bracket. And in order to do this, I need to do some masking. And since he's moving from right to left and he's moving down the stairs, the easiest way for me, at least, since he's got crazy arms in the front, is to mask around the back. And so I'm going to start here right where, start about right here, where we can see that he's on there. Let's grab the pen tool. And I'm going to put a couple of points up here because I'm going to need more once he's more into the frame. And then let's mask all the way around. And then I need to go back. But before I do that, I need to make sure you keyframe the position. The first time I tried this, I'd gone through and masked the whole thing, and I forgot to hit keyframe, and I didn't actually animate anything. So I'm moving just backwards in time. And I'm doing that by hitting the page up on the keyboard. And let's bring this back. And you want to get it fairly close to the back of his legs. And the closer, the closer you can get to his legs, the more people you can have coming down the stairs. And the more people you have, the shorter your loop needs to be, which will save you space when you try to turn this into a file that will animate on the internet. So I'm just kind of a few frames at a time. I'm just going forward five frames. And I'm probably going to speed this up here in a second. But you want to make sure that you stay fairly close. I don't want to be right on it because I'm going to feather this. Um, but about this close should be fine. Okay, so I've kind of powered through that. And once I've got just the initial um, keyframe going, I need to kind of go through and just see to make sure that I'm not cutting off any of his parts of his body. Now, there's really no quick and easy way to do this. You just have to kind of go through and do it frame by frame. Not frame by frame. I went through five at a time. But as far as trying to do some tracking or anything like that, it's uh, not going to work out too good for you. So now I'm just going through frame by frame, and I can see right here. Um, I need to move that a little bit. And so I'm just hitting, again, the page down on the keyboard. 
and that will take me through the frames. And I want it to be close, but again, not cutting any of him off. So this part actually goes pretty fast once you got the initial um, key framing in there for the mask. And we're almost done. Oh, right here. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take somewhere here in the middle and let's add a feather to this. So go down to the mask feather and I think 25 should be about right. You just need a little bit just to help things kind of blend together a little bit better. Now let's, let's move this so we can see more of our timeline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go somewhere here in the middle. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to take this bottom one and I'm going to move it back until I can see both of them. Looks like it's it's about one second, um, which is nice. That means every second it's going to repeat. So I'm going to now go to right here to two seconds, duplicate this layer, select the bottom layer, and I'm going to hit the left bracket on my keyboard and it'll move everything over. It's not going to cut it if I just hit the bracket without option. Now go up to three seconds, duplicate this. That's Command D or Control D. Select the bottom one, hit the left bracket, and we're going to just do this several times. Again, just keep on going one second forward, duplicating and shifting. Okay, so I think we have enough. So now what we need to do is pre-compose this. So I'm going to select all of these, Command Shift C. We'll open up the pre-compose window, or it's Control Shift C on Windows, and we'll call this Dupe Aaron. Make sure you move all attributes. And then what we need to do is take this composition, and I'm going to my composition settings, and I need to change this just to one second. Because remember, it was one second before I repeated it. And so now, at one second, it's going to loop. Now, it's going to not loop here at the beginning, so I need to move. I'm just moving this over until all the errands are on. And at this point, where this... Um, front person is on that edge I can move this anywhere and it'll it'll loop just perfectly so let's put it about right there so he's not halfway off and let's just hit the space bar and let's quickly preview through this so there we have it it's crazy lots of duplications now how do we take this and turn it into an animated gif so with that you're gonna have to use Photoshop and if you've got After Effects you most likely have Photoshop and so let's quickly render this out and I'm going to render it as just an H.264 and then I'm going to bring it into Photoshop. So file, export, let's add it to the render queue. Changes to H.264. Let's give it a save location. Click save and we're going to render that out pretty fast. Now let's open up Photoshop. So here's Photoshop, and I'm just going to grab the movie I just exported, the H.264, drag it, drop it right in, and then here I have it in Photoshop. There's the layer down here. You can see that it's a video file, and yes, you can play videos in Photoshop. Now, the reason why I have to bring this in Photoshop is because After Effects, you can't export it as a looping animated GIF. Um, so it's really easy to do in Photoshop. I just brought that video in. I'm going to go to File save for web and let's put it onto a gif down here under looping options let's loop forever and let's go in here and fix some of these settings we want this to be somewhat compressed but we also want it to look nice so let's also bring this down to 25 percent uh, let's go 40 percent 50 percent now, ideally, I'd like to get this down to just one megabyte. We're at two megabytes now. So let's try. All right, there. We're just under one megabyte. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, lossiness to it. So you can see there's a little bit of banding and things like that. But overall, it's pretty good. And you're just going to want to uh, mess with the colors and the, the lossiness and the settings in here. It all depends on your footage. If there's lots of gradients and things like that, it's going to be a bigger file. If it's more flat colors, then it's going to be a smaller file. Now, so from here, I'm just going to save this. And that's it. 
So let's open up. So here we have the looping GIF. Pretty darn cool. And you can op upload this to you know, your social media and do all sorts of fun things with this. So I'm going to be posting this one to Google Plus and you can go check it out there. Also, I want to see what you do with this. I want to see you create your own looping GIFs with lots of crazy characters, whether you use this image of Aaron or if you're out there creating your own. Now, the key to this is I had it locked down on a tripod. You can't use a handheld camera for this because it needs to be the same all the way through. It needs to be completely steady or it's not going to work. You'll also notice in the download of this video file of Aaron, I will show you right now, is I've also got one of him going up the stairs. So mess around with that. Uh, maybe you can get some good looping action of him going up the stairs. I'd like to see it. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I put out new tutorials actually twice a week now, Fridays and Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, it is quick tips. So these are short, quick tips for After Effects, just quick little things I've learned to make life a little bit easier. And then on Fridays, I do full tutorials. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.